Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. It's my second winter with my Prius Prime, and last winter I ran the stock tires and it was a big mistake, so this winter I wanted to correct that. I wanted... Like most people that are in the market for winter tires, my first stop was TireRack.com. They have some excellent reviews on there, and I selected the, um, well I narrowed it down to the uh, Michelin X-Ice tires as well as the Bridgestone Blizzak WS80s. Now, TireRack.com does not sell Nokian tires. And previously, I had an Audi A4 with Quattro. I had Hakapalita R's on those. Uh, they don't offer them anymore. They now offer the R2s. However, I really love those tires, and I wanted to consider Nokian for a brand, despite not being available on TireRack.com. I kind of luck out because I'm located in New Hampshire, and the U.S. headquarters for Nokian uh, is in Colchester, Vermont, I believe. So they're readily available around me. However, that's not the case for everyone, especially in the United States. They are kind of a name brand in Canada as well as Scandinavia. I think next year they're opening up a manufacturing facility down in Tennessee, so they'll become more of a name brand in the United States next year. So let's talk about costs for some of you, because some of you, uh, that is a factor. And the Michelin X-Ice uh, tires on TireRack.com, when I checked, they were three eighteen eighty dollars for the 195 65 15 That's for four tires not mounted or balanced. Uh, none of these figures are, actually. And the Bridgestone Blizzak WS80s, they were three seventy five eighty. dollars and the Nokian Hawk completed nines were 556 so a lot more money for the Nokians. However, I view it more of a safety investment. It only takes one corner or intersection for you to be out of control or someone else to be out of control and for you to get out of the way in time. And if you're sitting there spinning or sliding, then uh, the damages that are going to result from that accident are going to be much greater than the, the difference between a cheap snow tire and an expensive snow tire or winter tire because... Um, there is kind of a difference between the snow and the ice. They have a patented technology so that the studs on the shoulder of the tire are a little bit different than the studs on the center of the tire. The studs on the shoulder of the tire, I'll show you later in the video, but basically they're designed for uh, anti-skidding in the lateral direction, going around corners, that sort of thing. But the studs in the center of the tire are more geared for uh, skidding in the longitudinal direction. Uh, the studs on the shoulder of the tire, um, they have like a weird triangular lobe type design. I don't know if you can see that, but the studs on the center of the tire do not. Now, when you're rotating forward, or when the tire is rotating forward, that leading edge right there is a little shorter than the trailing edge. So when you're skidding, the trailing edge is going to be biting in first, and it's going to act like a plow, reducing your stopping distance. So the grooves right here, you can see that distance is pretty, um, pretty wide compared to some of the other winter tires out there. And that's really designed so that the snow and the slush uh, can really find an escape route to the outer edge of the tire. Since I've had the tires, there was one morning where it was about 16 degrees Fahrenheit and the roads were glare ice. There were some pickup trucks that were off the road. One of my coworkers totaled her vehicle. She had a Nissan Murano uh, with all-wheel drive, so it's an SUV. She had winter tires on it. Um, the roads were very bad. However, I felt pretty safe uh, driving down the roads. Um, I think that the Hakapalita 9s definitely made a difference. And uh, in my driveway, like I said, it was glare ice. So when I was just going 10 miles an hour, uh, with no corners or other people around me. I skidded the brakes to see if they made an improvement and I could see where the studs were biting in. Um, and then also where my ABS kind of let go and you know came back on, that sort of thing to help slow me down. So it was pretty cool to see. And that being said, I definitely felt like the investment was worth it. I've noticed maybe uh, probably four to five miles per gallon difference on the interstate. And when I'm driving around town, I average about 62 miles per gallon in hybrid mode. So not that different. I realize that a lot of Prius owners uh, might be triggered that there's a reduction in fuel economy. However, if you live where there's snow and ice, uh, you're going to you're gonna side with me. Um, it really doesn't matter if you sacrifice four miles per gallon. If you're averaging over 50 to 60 miles per gallon, but you have safe, uh, proper winter tires, that's going to be much better than maximizing your fuel economy and being dangerous out there on the road. There's other, it's not just you. There's there's families out on the road. It's it's a safety thing. Unfortunately, when I was filming the sound clips, uh, I was underestimating how noisy the studs would be when you're traveling at low speeds. I think that the wind noise on the interstate kind of drowns out the noise of the studs. So uh, there's not really that much of a difference in the decibels before and after. However, from the sound clips, I think you'll be able to see that maybe there's a difference in the, in the frequency. It sounds like there's... Uh, like mud tires on your Prius or something like that. But when you're in parking lots, uh, it is very noticeable. That might annoy some people, but if there's snow on the ground, that's going to muffle the sound a little bit. And for me, it's more about a safety thing, so I, re I really don't care if they're noisy or not.
Like I said before, uh, it's not really that noticeable of a difference with the decibels on the interstate. However, uh, in the parking lots it is, so now I'll show you that. Driving down the road, going about 40 to 45 miles an hour in EV mode, you can see the sound. Although the microphone for the cell phone is tuned for uh, human voice and it's not entirely accurate, I hope it kind of gives a picture about uh, how loud the studs actually are. Coming up this winter, I really hope to get some uh, some better tests about the winter driving with a Prius Prime. Last winter, I didn't have this channel at the time, and I was getting used to my car. Now I'm pretty used to it. I know what to expect. So I'm really looking forward to it. The Prius Prime is now offered for sale in Quebec, so a lot of viewers in Quebec are going to be wondering how well the Prius Prime handles in the snow. And, uh, you know, before the end of the year, a lot of people are going to be concerned about the tax credits in the United States, if they're staying, if they're going away, whatever. So I expect in November and December for a lot of people to be purchasing a Prius Prime. And that being said, I mean, a lot of states do experience winter weather and a lot of people can't afford to have a summer car versus a winter car or a summer car and a winter car. So they're really going to be concerned, you know, how well the Prius Prime handles in the snow. So anyways, thanks for watching and stay tuned for more of my winter videos.